Hello, I'm Kate McKinnon. I'm going to show you another technique from contemporary geometric beadwork. This is the cone stitch, which was developed for Volume 1 by Dustin Wedekind and explored in that volume quite beautifully by Christina Vanderblist. I'm going to show you how to make a simple, large cone with size 6 and size 8 beads. The cone stitch starts with a 2-bead ladder, because this piece is done in two long spirals, neighboring spirals, and you'll work alternately on one round and then the other. So let's get started. To start a traditional two bead ladder, you pick up two of each bead and then we're going to pass through them to join them into a circle. I'm working with a rather long thread but not nearly as long as it ought to be. This is actually the perfect project if you're one of those people who loves to use uh, six foot lengths of thread. Um, this cone is made of thread. So form your beads into a circle and then pass back up through the first two that you put on and this will leave you in nice position to begin a herringbone stack, the traditional two bead ladder. So you pick up one of each bead pass down through one bead and then back up again through two. And in this manner you'll build a lovely long worm and how long you make this really just depends on what you can hold in your hands. To start the cone we'll actually need a strip that's long enough to overlap on itself and so it's really whatever you're comfortable holding. I'll probably do about 30 units. So, I'll be back with you in a moment. As you can see, I've completed about 30 units and I've got enough of a shape now to overlap. Right? This is how we make the join. We overlap the beads. I've woven my tail back and trimmed it off just a little bit. I'm not comfortable cutting it completely, but I would like it to be out of the way for the video. So that's where my tail went. And you'll notice my thread is coming out of the round size 6 beads. So of the two ways to join this into a spiral, this is probably the least useful as my thread is coming out into the air and I'd have to simply get down there to make the join. So instead, we'll make our lives easier and do the join like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to square stitch these three beads to these three beads. So I'll begin by doing them one at a time. You can also go through all three and come back, you know, whatever, whatever you enjoy. So there's the first square stitch. And now I'm going to go into the second bead. And I'm going to square stitch the second bead to the second bead. And then I'm going to come out here at the end bead, the third bead, and square stitch it to its neighbor. Now, you can overlap as many beads as you like in this, whatever you're comfortable with, but I would say three would be the minimum. Now, reinforce the join and come out here at one of the inside tracks and we are ready to begin increasing and decreasing the cone. Now that the spirals have been joined together, you're ready to proceed in an orderly fashion with the increases and decreases. Um, you can see already that the beads have a preference for which side they'd like the decrease to be on and which side is natural to start the increase. So here we are coming out of the inside track, which is where we'll generally be working on the cone. And uh, in the book we show a useful pattern, which is three single square stitches and then an event either an increase or a decrease. And since we're on the increase side, we're ready for that as we just square stitch the first three together. So increase, I'm going to pick up two beads and sew them to one bead. And then I'm going to 
go back to my three single square stitch. So there's the first. And the second. And the third. And then I'll be ready for another increase of two beads to one bead. And I'm going to proceed around the spiral, beading in this pattern, three singles, increase, there's my two beads to one bead. So I'll be doing this until I reach the end of the spiral, and at that time it'll be an opportunity to step into the next row. So see how this goes? I'll increase all along here, and then I'll make a switch back to the inside track and work the brown beads. Oh. See you in a moment. As you can see, I have continued the increase beads all the way around until I am almost at the end of the row. I could certainly cram one more bead on there, but there's no real reason to do that. Uh, we'll be back at that row soon enough. What I need to do now is move my thread and my needle so that I'm coming out of the inside track. And however you get there is absolutely fine. Again, there's so much thread in this cone that you don't have to worry too much about tension. In fact, the softer the better, as long as there's no loose thread. You'll have an opportunity to shore this up later. And uh, so, no real need to worry about thread paths, about tension. This is a really nice freeing piece. Now, in this piece, or in this row right here, the uh, beads will proceed all the way around one-to-one. -one. So you can see how this creates a nice spread because we've added in increased beads. And so for every single one of those, a nice larger bead is going on. So it's a gradual, gentle spread. And uh, in terms of how many beads you put on, whether you're following the pattern of three-in-one or not, um, you really need to just pay more attention to tailoring because the idea is to fit as many beads as are sensible in each flaring round, in each increase round. And you may find that, you know, every third space works better for you than every fourth space. Uh, in later rounds, if you want a very extreme flare at the base, then you may choose to actually put increases every other space. So it's really just a matter of neatly fitting all of the beads together and uh, you should use your judgment on when you place increases and decreases as you go along you'll begin to get a feel for what fits nicely if you're seeing gaps you need more beads if it's overly crowded you're putting in too many so I'm going to go just like this all the way around and I'm going to go bead by bead put one bead on each of the white beads and then again I'll step down until I'm on the inside track and continue the increases. And now I've completed the brown row sewn one to one to the previous increase row above it and you can see how it's flaring. Uh, I added, I alternated um, every third space and every fourth space for the increases because I was interested in having a nice flare. So once again I need to get my needle to be coming out of the inside track. And uh, so, again, it doesn't matter how you get there. You can see, too, that uh, it's almost time to change my thread. I've got uh, over a meter of thread in these few rounds so far. The piece feels wonderful, stretchy and soft and completely thready. And I'm using a Nymo B from the 3 ounce cone a lovely soft sable brown. Uh, I would imagine that your thread choice will have a lot to do with how your fabric feels because, as I say, it's really mostly thread. So here I am coming out of the increase row and again remember that uh, all you're trying to do is make a neat fit and get a good flare. So I'm going to take a peek here and see which is the last bead I went into and begin to add beads. And at this point, I'm going to go strictly by eye, not by count. I'm going to see where I can fit a single bead and where the beads are asking for more. So I'll proceed around this spiral 
setting increases and single stitches until I meet up at the brown round. And then I'll step down, get back on the inside track, and once again make a round of brown beads one to one with the white beads below them. And right now, I believe I will change threads. Now be sure to weave in. Square stitching is good. As long as you change directions, your thread should be secure. There will be more passes yet through this cone. And because of that, that is another great reason to leave your tails sticking out just a little bit so that you know where they are and that as you're passing through on the tailoring rounds, you will be able to know where they are and not back them out. And I want to point out to you that in this cone here that Dustin made, one of the ways that he achieved this beautiful depth with the smaller beads is that after the piece was finished, he took a new thread and went all the way down through the cone, but only in the spiral of the size 11 beads. And so he went through all of those beads, pulling the thread together, and what it did is it, it sucked those beads down into the fabric, leaving the yellow beads to stand above. Now, if you had wanted a smoother fabric, instead of this beautiful graduation that Dustin achieved, you could have gone through the larger beads instead, which would even the piece out, or you can go through both rows. If you want a very stiff cone, you know, you might choose to reinforce with a very stiffening thread, something like Fireline, where you can really get a tug on. Uh, Dustin did this cone with Nymo, and it's soft and supple, but also willing to hold its shape. So I'm going to get a new thread ready to go, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to do the decrease. Now I've got a new thread ready to go. Not nearly long enough, of course. I point out to you that there is over a meter of thread in here, so the longer the better, but for purposes of filming, I'm going to do it with a short one. Um, this is a stop bead. Just pass through the bead in a little circle, making sure not to catch the thread. I like to start my threads in soft stitches like this with a stop bead because it, uh, it, it prevents me from having to make a knot. And one important thing to know about the cone, just square stitching a bit here to anchor my thread, one important thing to know about the cone is that we'll be passing back through these rows later uh, if we want and we'll have the opportunity to tailor in the beads a bit and so ideally you'd like to keep your beads freely moving because that way you'll have a chance to later pull them together and I'll show you what I mean my thread is anchored and coming out of the inside track uh, in Dustin's piece here after the cone was completely finished, Dustin took a thread and ran it all the way down through the size 11 beads, pulling tightly as he went. And so that actually pulled in those rounds and made that spiral smaller and tighter than the yellow beads. Now you can do that in one row, both rows, whatever effect you're going for, you have a lot of control over how the finished product looks by what you do after the cone is built. So uh, also remember that when you're decreasing here, you can stop whenever you're comfortable. There's no need to go all the way to a point if, for example, you wish to attach this to a rope and you'd like to have a larger opening. So uh, simply increase and decrease until you're happy with your cone. And remember, you can always go back into it. So let me show you how the decrease is done. This is the same idea, almost a mirror image of the increase and that uh, the, the active round that's decreasing, you're going to eyeball, uh, work on a pattern or work by feel, and decrease as you go along. In the pattern in the book, we mirrored the three-in-one, where uh, every fourth space, you'll either place an increase or a decrease. With these beads that are slightly more irregular, I'm working more by feel. But the general idea is, if you remember, we attach this band with three individual square stitches, so it's time to take a decrease, and that would be one bead into two. And so go along, following a pattern or not, as you see fit, placing single stitches on single beads, 
and then every so often single stitches on doubled beads. So I will continue decreasing until I reach the end of the spiral and then I'll step down to the white row and then on this side it'll be the white round that goes bead by bead. So for every brown bead I end up with in this row there will be one white bead on top of it. I'm going to take another decrease now, one bead on my thread, and I'm going to go into two white beads in the row below. That's really all there is to it. Just march along until you've decreased a satisfactory amount. And then when you're finished with the general shape of your cone, you're satisfied with its height and attitude, we can take a run through one of the spirals and see how that affects the shape. See how that goes? Increases on one side, decreases on the other. Go until you're finished. I'll see you when we're done. Now that I've progressed enough on my cone to consider it being perhaps finished or almost finished, I wanted to point out to you uh, the finish at the ends. Dustin and Christina have been fond of finishing and then continuing and edging of the smaller bead or another decorative bead around the edge. And uh, I just wanted to point out to you that it's also an option to finish in sort of a yin-yang or to leave a variety of edges, whatever pleases you. But right now I'd like to show you the last thing that I had on my list, which is the tailoring. And I'm going to just uh, slip my needle into this brown round. And I'm going to go all the way around the piece with the thread. And here's where I really have a choice. I can pull it very snugly or just treat this as a reinforcing pass. Yet more thread through this delightful structure. Pardon me, Dustin's cone. And you'll see that as you go back up through these spirals, you know, it's very strengthening any little gaps or inconsistencies from the increases or decreases are mitigated. The whole thing becomes smooth and just a little bit stiffer. So watch out if you don't want it to get too stiff when you're doing this that you don't pull the thread tightly. I'm really not pulling at all right now. I'd like to focus my tailoring more in the white beads. So when I get up there I'll bring the thread all the way back down through the white spiral and at that time I'll be pulling as I go. Now I've woven my thread all the way up the brown spiral and now I'm coming down around the white spiral and on the white I'm actually tugging my thread in a little bit to create these beautiful insets. So I'll run through a few beads <laughs> If you haven't made one of these before, you'll just laugh when you see how much thread is in there. Uh, it's really hard to describe how thready these are. Delightfully so. Okay, so a few more stitches and then another tug. I'm trying to pull evenly. As soon as this reinforcement is done, I can trim all of my tails. But I'll just proceed through this piece snugging. Ooh, look at that. See how that works? And then when I come down to the bottom, I can decide whether to add embellishment, further rows, anything. This is very sturdy. Um, you know, in terms of beadwork, not all finished beadwork is sturdy, wearable. We wish that it was. But in the cone, you truly have something that can stand up to a lot of abuse. 
Uh, you can also fill it with things. If you look in the book, you'll see Christina Vanderbilt's beautiful coneflower brooch. Uh, just lovely things you can do with this form. So that's really all there is to it. A joined spiral built from a two bead ladder and increases on one side, decreases on the other. Build it as small, as wide as you like. Take a reinforcing pass through it when you're finished to adjust your attitude and your tailoring. And remember, you can always go back into it and add more.